Hey guys, to be honest with you, listen, Mr. Braggs, I want to thank you very much for um, allowing me to um, utilize your students in this seminar. Hey, um, Mr. Braggs students, I want you guys to know something, all right? Um, when you were in the sixth grade, you took um, a seven habit class with Miss, I don't know, who, who was your teacher? Ms. Pearson. Ms. Pearson. Okay, and now you have Mr. Braggs for your emerging leaders. I mean, guess what? For eighth grade, this is the class you're going to be in. It's called Leadership Seminar. All right? Um, so what we do here, show a little interest, man. There you go. Yeah, you. All right, smile. Everyone smile, 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 smile. All right, this is something really good. So what we do in Leadership Seminar is we teach you how to work in the real world. In my Leadership Seminar class, my students have jobs where they get paid for it as well. And they actually do real life job stuff. All right, um, with the company that we have here, it's called Self Seminole Academy um, uh, Management Company, right? And we have a CEO, CEO, put your hands up. All right, Aiden is the CEO, he's in charge of the entire class and he does his job. They also in charge of the PBS financial system and the hero system. As you can see, we have a store here in the, in the room where students has, can use their stone bucks to buy items. They work really hard in this room, okay? Um, so this is what you guys are gonna be doing next semester. Uh, we also bring in guest speakers to do seminar. So a seminar is usually someone in front of the room giving you information that you need, that, that's gonna help you as you get older, okay? All right, and we normally set up um, a table with food items so that you guys can, you know, uh, get some kind of refreshment after. Okay, so this is his second time coming here to do a seminar here at the school. So he's going to tell you, he's going to talk to you about getting paid to go to college instead of you having to pay to go to college. He's going to talk to you about how do you get paid to go to college. Okay, all right. Um, he comes with, with, with high experience. And it, it comes with, with working hard. And he has worked hard. Okay, um, and I'm proud to say he's my son. All right, um, his name is Amari Holt. So he goes to UCF and he lives on campus. So he's getting that experience of being in college instead of being home. Okay, he had the opportunity to stay home, but I would rather him go to college and live on a campus. I have two sons before him and they all went to college. All right, one went to college in Minnesota for two years, he came back and he finished here. The other one went to college in Connecticut, went to Yale University, okay? And they all played football in college as well. And they graduated, my oldest owned his own business, that I work for him as well. And my youngest, um, you know, he's making that six figures that you want to make when you get older. And he's only 25 years old, okay? Has his own house, and that, that's what he's gonna, that, that's what he's gonna talk to you guys about. So seventh graders, I appreciate you guys coming here to join my eighth grade class. Hopefully you'll learn something before you leave. All right? Okay, so let's welcome Amari from UCF. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to get the edge on a free college education and eventually get paid for it. So in this presentation, I'm going to be talking about the difference between scholarships and student loans, the Florida Bright Future Scholarship Program, and dual enrollment opportunities. All right, so who I am, he said most of it. I am Amari Alt, his son, and I graduated from Lake Brantley High School in Altamont back in May 2019. And right now I'm on spring break from UCF. My major is computer science, and I'm currently going to college for free. So. What does that mean? So how much does college cost? Well, there's four main parts to it. There is the tuition and fees part, which is all of your classes, room and board, which is where you live, books, because books are expensive in college, you have to pay for them yourself, and personal expense, so like your daily, day-to-day -day life. So first I'm gonna go into tuition and fees. So in college, your, the amount you pay is based on credit hours, which are the, the rough amount of hours you're expected to spend in a class each week. And that only includes in classroom, not doing homework and things like that. So each, cl each class has a different amount. So most classes are worth three credit hours. And this is how they 
give you the price tag. So each college has their own set of prices for credit hours. University of Florida has $212.71 for in-state tuition. UCF has $212.28, and USF has $211.19. Now these are the in-state prices, because when you're in-state you get um, a residential, I don't want to say coupon, that's kind of what it is. So if you were to get someone from out of state, so maybe let's say Nebraska decided to go to one of these schools, at UF for one credit hour, they would have to pay $955.28. UCF is at $748.89, and USF is at $575.01. So as you can see, college can get expensive because if a out of state student went to UF, they would have to pay for one class as three credit hours, have to pay almost $3,000, and that's really crazy. So to put it into perspective as an in-state student, at UCF, if you were to take 15 credit hours per semester, that would be $212.28 times 15, which for tuition would be $3,184.20 per semester, and there's two semesters. So that is crazy. And then for a full degree, it's eight semesters. So that's a lot of money. So how are you going to pay all of that? Well, there's scholarships and grants, and then there's also student loans, which I put you next to because they're not the best. And I'll tell you why later on. So a scholarship program Florida has is the Bright Futures program, where Florida students can go to college if they stay in Florida with tuition scholarships, which is really nice. So they split it up into three categories. They have the Florida Academic Scholars, the Florida Medallion Scholars, and the Gold Seal Vocational Scholars. So I'm just going to talk about the Florida Academic and Florida Medallion Scholars today. To, since you guys are still in eighth grade, you'll get more information later on. But we just want to give you that edge. So the differences between FAS and FMS, that's their initials, is that the Academic Scholar pays for 100% of your tuition. And then the Medallion Scholars pays for 75%. Now for the medallion, you do have lower requirements because it is a lower amount, but if you surpass those and get the academic requirements, all of your tuition will be paid for. So here are the requirements, and I'll just go over them briefly. So you have the normal classes you need to graduate, so four English credits, four math credits, three natural science credits, three social science, and two world languages, and that's in high school. And then you also need to take ACT and SAT. So you only have to take one, but it's recommended you do both because sometimes you get a higher score on a different test and do better on another. And that they only take the best of one. So for those, if you, you guys are going to be after 2020, so your requirements for the academic scholars would be a 29 on the ACT and a 1330 on the SAT. And for the medallion, it would be a 25 on the ACT and a 12 10 on the SAT. You'll understand those scores more in high school as you go on. And then they are allowed to change these whenever they want. So just know that these requirements may change. And then you also have to do community service hours. So for the academic scholars, you would have to do 100. And for medallion, you'd do 75. And an easy way to remember that is if you want 75% of your tuition, you have to work um, do community service for 75 hours. And if you want 100% of your tuition, you have to do community service for 100 hours. So I decided to do all of my community service hours at my middle school that I went to, Teague Middle School. And I helped my Spanish teacher grade papers, set up the classroom, sometimes help the students with their assignments. And I had a pretty fun time being back there. And we all have fun. So, now for the more general scope of scholarships and grants. So scholarships and grants are just free money. There's nothing tied to them. You don't have to pay them back. And there's many different types of scholarships out there. Like one I did, I didn't get it, but I still did it, was um, last Halloween. They had one where you had to like make a zombie escape plan for a zombie apocalypse at your school. And it was about 500 words but you can fill up 500 words really quickly. And it was really fun to write. And also in high school, 
your high school guidance counselors will have scholarship opportunities for you. All you gotta do is go up to them and ask them and they should be able to help you out there. So does anyone have any questions? I know I'm going a little fast right now. All right. So now we're gonna go to student loans. So student loans is where you get money, but you have to pay back that money. So after, normally you pay it after college graduation, and that's just an immediate expense after because once you graduate, you have to find a job. And if you don't have a job right after graduation, technically you're gonna be in the red. Do you guys know what in the red means? No? All right. So basically, if you have a negative amount of money, that's when you're in the red. So that's when you're owing money. So technically your income would be in the red since you don't have a job giving you money, but you have to pay back money from the loan. So there's two different types. And this transition takes a while. There's the subsidized loans, which is where you pay 100 and, oh no, you get 100 and then you pay 100, there's no interest. But then there's unsubsidized where you do have interest. And that is where things can get expensive because most loans offered are unsubsidized. So I have a little website that can tell you how they can be really bad for you. Let me just load it up. Does anyone have any questions on loans right now? I get this set up. All right. So, all right. So let's say you get about ten thousand dollars for a loan. All right. And then the loan company gives you 6% APR, which is, determines the amount of interest. And you take about, put, eight years to pay it back. So if we calculate that, that means you'll be paying back the 10,000 plus $2,615.77. So that's added on to the amount you borrowed. So technically, you're actually paying more than you would if you had just paid it flat out. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. So that's why loans can be really picky, because in the end, you will, depending on how long you take to pay them back, you may be paying even more than what your college actually costs. All right. So what about my situation? So I received the academic scholars from Bright Futures, which is 100%, and UCF also offered me a Pegasus Gold Scholarship, which was in total $14,000, and I get $1,750 per semester towards my tuition, and then I also got grants. So the scholarships, the school can also give you a scholarship. This doesn't have to be a random website or anything. So I got that for academic achievement, and they can go pretty high. I know one of my friends, they were offered a $28,000 scholarship to UCF, and that's, that's amazing. And then grants are given on need-based factors, so if they decide that you should have more money to pay off, they will just give it to you. And the earlier you apply, the more you get, because that's how it happens. They have a pool of money that they can just give to you, and whoever comes first gets first. All right. So now for me, in my fall sem semester, can everyone see here? Yeah. All right. Actually, I'll put it over here. So in my fall semester, I took 13 credit hours. So that is $212. 28 cents per credit hour. And I did the math here earlier, so I went mess up. So that adds up to $2,759.64. And, right. and then I also lived on campus. And on campus cost $3,045 in the entire semester. So then the, the fall semester from room and board and tuition wise, cost me $5,804.64. Sorry, I went slanted. However, for the entire year, they offered me two grants, 
the Bright Future Scholarship, which is split up into two first semesters, and also the Pegasus Scholarship. So in fall, they split it up to where I would get $8,138.92 for the fall semester. And that is more than this number. So what do you guys think happens to the excess money? Exactly, you get to keep it. So basically, they gave me about $3,000, because I also have prepayments that they give you back, to just use for my personal life. And living by myself for the first time, I realized how expensive it is to live, depending on your lifestyle, and I have an expensive lifestyle. So that's something to keep in mind, that the money you get back, you'll be able to use for yourself, like to eat, live, go out if you want, and have fun. And you just have to be responsible with the money. So does anyone have any questions about anything I talked about? Yes? Uh, question one, why the large disparity for in-state tuition versus out-state tuition? So mainly that's dependent on the college. Most of them say that since you're not in-state, you wouldn't be paying the state taxes. So they incorporate that into you staying on campus most of the time. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, which grants did you get? The grants, I got the federal Pell Grant and also the Florida Student Assistant Grant. What's the name for the Florida Pell Grant? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. Do you know? Is it financial aid? Um, everything's called financial aid. So, yes. yeah, everything you get is financial aid because it's aiding you financially. Right? Any Did other? you get a loan? Hmm? No, no loans. That was all without loans I got there, so none of it have to be back. So, last question. Um, mm -hmm. You didn't, no, she didn't put, you kind of just said I get to keep the money. Right. But you didn't mention <laughs> that you hadn't paid for a whole bunch of things like car and like right. insurance and like uh, <laughs> yes. and possibly boats too. You know, like right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. with that money you get back, you do get to keep it, but you also have to pay for books, which can get expensive, but it depends on the classes you take. My classes I got lucky, I only have to get one book and one eye clicker. It's a little thing that you make you pay for it. And then I also have my own car, so I have to pay the payments on that. So when you get your money back, make sure you divide it up because you want to make sure you have enough money for yourself. Okay. So I should ask Mr. Office, is he covering all of it? Is he sure? <laughs> this comes out of your pocket. So here's what I'm going to tell you. I do not give him any money at all. Okay. Yep. And on top of that, he works for the company as well. Oh, yeah. Very nice. So he's being paid double from different places. Yep. Got to put that work in. <laughs> awesome. So any more questions on... Scholarship grant student loans. All right. So what can you guys do? So the best thing to do is to do good in high school because as you saw, all of those requirements rely on what you do. So is anyone here taking a high school credit class, like Spanish one, algebra one, geometry? All right. Well, guys, so what you do in that class already determines how you're going to progress in high school. So what I mean by that is the grade you get in that class automatically goes to your high school GPA. So let's say you got a B in Spanish 1, you will start high school with a 3.0. However, that may sound scary, but it's only because you only had one high school credit class. So it didn't have, it had much more impact than if you had 7, which you would have in normal high school. Does that make sense? Right. So I'm going to show you my high school track. So in ninth grade, I started out with standards and honors classes. 10th grade, I moved to all honors. In 11th, I took the big jump to all AP. And in 12th grade, I did all AP and dual enrollment. So the differences in those classes is that in a standard class, you have, there's no weight. So if you have an A in the standard class, your GPA would be a 4.0. So if you had all honors classes, there's a weight of 0.5, which means if you had all A's, you'd have a 4.5 GPA. And then there's these classes called AP, which is stands for Advanced Placement, and Dual Enrollment, which are both have the opportunity for you to get college credit, and I'll talk about that soon. And they also have a weight of one, which means if you had all AP classes or Dual Enrollment, and you had an A in all of them, you would have a 5.0 GPA, which is really high. So here is AP and Advanced Placement. 
So it's a class in school that is taught at college level, and you can get a, you have the possibility of getting college credit, which is determined by at the end of your exam, which is held in the first two weeks of May, and we call it AP season because that is a stressful season. And the scores are one through five, and the colleges decide on what score gives you credit. So I took AP US history in 11th grade, and I got a four on that exam. So on, with a four, I got credit for all of American history. But if I had gotten a three, I would have got credit for the first half of American history. And normally three is that pass fail point. But some colleges do offer credit for a two. So my AP experience, I took nine AP classes and I passed six of those exams. So I took, I'm gonna list them off. AP Compu Computer Science Principles, AP Computer Science A, Physics 1, Calculus A, B, B, C, so we mixed class, English Language and English Literature, US Government, Environmental Science, and as I said earlier, US History. And in that US History class, my teacher, have you guys seen Magic School Bus? My teacher was basically like Miss Frizzle. So, one day I walked into class and the classroom was just like this. And she played music every day at the beginning. So you're probably wondering why was the classroom destroyed like that? Well, basically we had to rebuild the United States after the independence, the war of independence. And that was a pretty fun day. We actually set up the classroom again. So, now any questions on the AP? All right. So I'm going to move. Comment uh -huh. that um, I'm a um, past high school teacher, so mm -hmm. it's very impressive the amount of AP oh, classes yes, that you. you took. So I do want to commend you. Thank that. you. <laughs> and let me say one more thing. In 11th grade, you saw that I did a jump to all AP. Um, I was not ready <laughs> for that because AP classes they're actually harder than college classes because they want to make sure you know everything. So I went from high school level to advanced college level for all of them. I didn't do one, two, three, I did one to four. So just know that you do have a limit and don't, don't work yourself too hard because for that US history class, it was a hard class. Every night I'd spend about two hours reading, reading history book for notes and she did have random pop quizzes every week. So that was fun, but just know don't work yourself too hard. Work hard, but don't work too hard to where you're tired and can't do anything. All right. So now for dual enrollment. So in dual enrollment, you are actually in a real college class on a college campus with real college students. And your grade transfers to the college you will go on. So in my dual enrollment experience in senior year, my first semester I took differential equations and it happened Wednesdays from 6 to 8.45 p.m. And then second semester, I did Calculus 3 on Mondays and Wednesdays from 6.30 to 8.10 p.m. So basically, on those days, I would go to SSC, the Sanford campus, and I would sit in a real college class and do real college work. And it is paid for by the county, so you're not paying for the college class, the county is. And I'm learning real differential equations in Calculus 3 with real college students. There's no difference. You sit in the class and everyone's a college student, really. And so you get, with dual enrollment, you get the college experience academically. So you'll be able to know how teachers work. Different teachers have different styles. Some do a full lecture. Some are interactive with their learning and write everything on the board. And then some, you will have to teach yourself the material, but they can still be helpful. And then you also get to learn about how schedules work in college, where you know how here you have, you come at 9.30, and you have seven, well, you guys have a mixed schedule. So four, three, or seven classes a day. And then you go. So in college, it works differently, and I'll go into that in a couple slides. So does anyone have any questions on dual enrollment? So basically with the dual enrollment, you're still in high school? Yes, you're still in high school. For my senior year, since I had enough credits, I only took five out of the seven classes a day. So on Wednesdays, I would get out at 11, I want to say 11.30. And so I had all that time 
to relax before I went to differential equations. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Did you have some of your high school classmates in your college? Yes, I actually did. So how was that experience? It was fun because before class we would all just study together or just laugh about things. And then they also, normally when you take through enrollment, they have been in your last class. So with differential equations, there we had maxed out on the math level at high school. So we took AP Calculus BC, which is the highest math, in 11th grade. So senior year, we decided to do, do enrollment. So we're all together because we were in the same class and had the same credits. Are you guys all together now in college as well? Yes, we are. It's pretty the same dorm. Yes. <laughs> and going to that, my college life. So, I dorm with three of my friends in a four bedroom, two bathroom apartment on campus. And this is what the room looked like before. It's not what it looks like now. Before it looked like a jail, but then I decorated it and everything. And now it looks like a nice little dorm, dorm room. And then we also decorated the living room. Do you guys know what pop figures are? Mm -hmm. My friend has about 100 pop figures. So there's a, there's a tower right here of them and it's crazy it's absolutely crazy and he also brought a piano which to me is crazy so then academics here was my fall schedule so on monday wednesday friday i would have intro to see biology one and for monday wednesday it's statistical methods so earlier i was mentioning how in college the schedule isn't like here in middle school and high school you actually get to choose what classes you have and choose when to have them. So this intro to C class, I could have done a different one that was at 9.30 in the morning, or I could have done one that was Monday, Wednesday from 6 to 7.15 p.m. So you, you have that flexibility in college where you get to choose your schedule. And I got to choose this one, which was pretty great because I woke up at 11 o'clock every morning just to go to an 11.30 lecture. And on Tuesdays, I had a class all the way at 4.30 p.m. so I could sleep into whenever I wanted. And it's not like how in high school, I had to wake up at six in the morning. So it was a nice transition. And currently, my spring schedule, it's a little different. I have a nine o'clock and a 9.30 class every day. <laughs> However, some professors are really nice in college. And if they have another section, so this CDA class, Instead of going from 9 a.m. to 10 15 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, she also has another section of the class that meets Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 to 7 15. So if I wanted to, like on Tuesdays, if I don't want to go there, I just want to have a, a free day off, on the Monday, I can go to the 6 to 7 15. So I don't have to worry about anything on Tuesday, which is pretty nice. So as you guys can see, my Thursdays and Fridays get a little jam packed. Thursday, I have the morning class that I'm well, that's weird. Give it a second. It likes to do this. On my Thursdays and Fridays, I have the morning class, which is pretty rough sometimes. And then I also have a biology two lab where I get to dissect things, look at plants closely with a microscope. It's really fun. And then on Thursday, I also have the English class. And Friday is jam packed because I have my 9.30 class, and then 11.30, 12.30, and 1.30. So it's just a three hour block. So on campus, there's um, classroom building two and HEC all the way over here. So I have to get from here to there in 10 minutes and it's an eight minute walk, which is crazy, especially in the sun. But our school got new scooters, so we get to ride around on those all the time. And they're really fun. So does anyone have any questions about college life, or dual enrollment, anything? Yes. What is your major? Um, I'm a computer science major. And you just want to do IT when you get older? Or? Um, I'm split between software engineering and cybersecurity right now, okay. but both sound really fun to me. And finally, do you plan on going to uh, graduate school? Um, I might. I'm not sure. It depends on if I can get a job during my senior year or not because my senior year is really short in class-wise. Uh, you notice he mentioned job. Um, we, we have a company going to our eight years, and he's been our IT for the past four years. He 
even from middle school. So without him, our company cannot function. He does all the IT work for us. And he even does it, like when we have tournaments, he's there at the tournament doing, making sure everything is fine. When you say the IT work, what specifically is he So basically I do everything that, from printing to updating the schedules throughout the weekend. So since I'm, since Thursdays, I don't have a free day. I, um, I set up all the printing files and then I email them to them in a zip file so they can print everything easily. I make it formatted so they can easily print it. And then during the weekend I update schedules and sometimes I have to do tiebreakers which get crazy but... And the funny thing is if something goes wrong on the computer, it's my famous word is, I'm worried! <laughs> Where are you? Yep. It was funny, last night actually I was taking a nap and I just heard my name so... I have to get up and do it. So. <laughs> it's fun. So, any other questions? All right. So, I got a little quiz is for you guys. I'll get you the um, soon. Oh, are you done with the presentation? Yes. Okay. So, well, before you start the quiz, because uh, my students, in my class is actually taking a quiz, and it's a test that they actually take. So I just wanted to say something real quick. I know I came Mr. Brad, thank you for bringing this up. I hope you guys learned something. Um, this is um, just to give you the edge on college life, okay? Um, they always say, you know, in middle school, you know, you, you don't know what you want to do and all that stuff. But if you get that edge, imagine you guys have the advantage of um, an other middle school student, all right? Um, he is living a really good life, all right? He has his own, he's been at his own car for from 11th grade. And he made, he made his own car payment, insurance and everything. All right, and I'm sure you guys can do that as well. If you are an athlete and you want to play sports, he didn't play sports in high school, but he did a lot of other things. I noticed he had mentioned that he went back to his middle school to do community service hours. After doing that, he was still going back. After doing the 100 of them, he was still going back. All right. Um, to a point where he's actually going back to as well now too sometimes and I talk to the teacher, talk to the students, and the students respect him. All right, um, so uh, again, thank you guys for coming. You guys don't have to stay for the quiz. Okay, all right. Uh, but you're welcome to stay, Mr. Barrett. You know? No, I don't think we want to do this. All right, again, guys, before you leave, please um, grab something to eat. 